all these IP addresses are pointing to one single location, and that location happens to be Russia. Russian hackers and Django. I knew this was gonna be interesting from the moment I read the headline. I skimmed through the post real quick just to kind of get a core idea of it. I already have some opinions formed, but let's read this together and let's see what it's all about because this one's kind of interesting. So the Reddit post is called How Russian Hackers Nearly Killed My Django-Based Business. My wife and I were hiking through the scenic hills of Belgium when I received a concerning email from AWS. The email titled Amazon SES complaint review period for AWS account contained the following warning. Your current complaint rate is 0.5%. We measured this rate over the last 10,351 eligible emails you sent. We recommend that you maintain a complaint rate of below 0.1%. If your complaint rate exceeds 0.5%, we might pause your ability to send additional emails. I use AWS Simple Email Service to send emails from my nonprofit organization, and this warning came as a shock. It indicated that recipients have been flagging emails sent from my system as spam. This was unexpected because the only emails I send to individuals are those who actively subscribe to the service. I've never sent unsolicited emails. So it looks like for some reason, all of a sudden, the users for this application are flagging them. Amazon is seeing this complaint rate go up, and now they're sending this user a warning. I run a small nonprofit which helps people living alone stay safe. Through my website, users can sign up using their email address and provide email addresses of chosen buddies, such as friends or family members. This service sends emails daily with a life sign button. If a user clicks the button, nothing happens. However, if they fail to respond, the system automatically alerts their designated buddies. This means that losing email sending capabilities could have life-threatening consequences for my users. So this is the website right here, and I think this idea is actually pretty interesting. This was created by a pharmacist. Apparently, they've been working in the industry for 30 years. And the core idea here is, let's say you have a grandma that's living alone, and every single day she receives a text or an email in this case at 9 a.m., and she has to respond by 12 and at least press this button on the website in that link and if she doesn't, then anybody on that list that helped her sign up for this website gets alerted that grandma may not be okay. So the idea here is if she falls in the shower or something happens and she can't call 911 or just call for help, now there's an automatic system that makes sure she's okay. This analogy is going to seem funny, but it reminds me of those movie scenes where somebody walks into some kind of dangerous situation in a room where they're surrounded by a bunch of bad guys and now they're in a bad place. And in order to get out of that, they tell them, hey... I have somebody outside, and if I'm not out in 15 minutes, there is this automatic trigger and something really bad happens, and it kind of sets this automatic series of events, and in this case, used for a really cool purpose, actually. I really like this idea. When I returned home, I immediately began investigating the complaints. My first step was to identify who was flagging my emails as spam and why. I downloaded the complaints list from AWS and cross-referenced it with my user database. My database contains both email addresses and IP addresses of users' internet service providers, ISPs, at the time of sign-up. Using a GeoIP database, I was able to determine the geographical location of users who had signed up. By combining the two datasets, I pinpointed the origins of the complaints. It quickly became apparent that the majority of the complaints were coming from Russia. So in simple terms, this is what a GeoIP database might look like. You have your users in one table here, and then you have your IP addresses in another. Now at the time of sign up, you figure out which user came from what IP. So let's say John Doe came from this IP and you simply cross reference them. And now you know where each user is coming from. All these IP addresses are pointing to one single location and that location happens to be Russia. So this right here is how he pinpointed where the bad emails are coming from and their specific location. So that's why the conclusion here is Russia. This discovery raised further questions about the motivations behind these complaints and how they might be mitigated to ensure uninterrupted services for my users. I had previously noticed that many Russian users had signed up but never logged in. So that right there is suspicious. When you see a bunch of users sign up for no reason, a lot of times we'll see a traffic spike, we'll get excited. If they're just sitting there, that might mean someone's placing them there for a specific reason and there's gonna be further intent later on. So that's definitely cause for concern, especially if they're from one place like that. Since they didn't appear to cause any issues, I chose to ignore them. However, this changed in late 2024, so it looks like we had some sleep agents. Suddenly, a majority of these users began marking email confirmation messages as spam. 
By December 2024, their behavior became more aggressive with the complaint rate more than tripling compared to the previous months. This surge in complaints severely impacted my email sending reputation, leading AWS to threaten suspension of my email sending capabilities. To better understand these attackers, I analyzed the email providers they were using. Interestingly, they almost never used Russian email providers. Instead, the overwhelming majority of them relied on American email services, with Gmail being the most popular by a significant margin. For this analysis, I examined 1,500 Russian users who had signed up for the service but were not using it, and it looks like we have Gmail at 625, Yahoo, Hotmail, and the only Russian one I see here is Yandex and gmx.de. I'm not sure which one that is. By leveraging the GeoIP database, I was able to approximate the location of these hackers. So here we have Moscow at 1,176, Unknown 301, and then a lot of other Russian cities here. It looks like Moscow is the place to be for the hacker. While uncovering all this information was insightful, it didn't immediately solve my problem. AWS suggested implementing CAPTCHA, probably a good idea here, to make it harder for bots to sign up. Yeah, that's kind of my first assumption is that this is probably a lot of bots and those users are probably not actually from that location. I followed up with their advice and it did reduce the number of signups from Russia. However, to my surprise, the complaints continued. These remaining complaints weren't tied to signups because I couldn't find the email addresses in my user database. Digging deeper in my system logs, I noticed a large number of reset password requests. After further investigation, I discovered a bug in my password reset process. If someone had entered an email address, whether or not they were associated with an actual account, a password reset email would be sent. Yeah, that's... um. I mean, it looks like this person is not like a full developer. They're a physician. But that's definitely a very basic mistake right there. Um, never send out emails to unverified users. That just That's asking for problems right there. So long story short, there's no verification process. If you request an email password reset, whether you're on that platform or not, you would get one. Anybody can write a script and then just spam the hell out of whatever they want with this. That's not a good idea. Hackers exploited this flaw, triggering these emails and then flagging them as spam. Okay, I see where this is going, and I'm going to touch on this in a second. So at this point, I feel like I can pretty confidently say that the person that's flagging those email as spam is actually not the attacker themselves. Most likely, there's an attacker that's performing this attack, and these people are randomly getting this password reset email, and they're confused, and then they're just flagging it. So I think it's the end user. I do feel like these might be real email accounts, considering that a lot of them were U.S.-based. But the user that's getting it is just trying to either unsubscribe, they're not sure what the service is, and that's what's causing the issue. Although this bug didn't pose a security risk, well, it kind of did in a different way. The process would fail later if the email wasn't linked to a valid account. It did inflate my spam complaint rate. I've since fixed the issue by ensuring the system first checks whether an account exists before sending a password reset email. So not only should you do that, you should also make sure that this is a verified user. So... Anybody can sign up if you don't have some kind of verification process where that email is confirmed. Still don't send that password reset until they've opened up some kind of link and confirmed on sign up. AWS was satisfied with the actions taken, reset the complaint counter, and concluded the review. The bigger question remains, why are these Russian hackers putting so much effort into undermining my email sending reputations, particularly for a small nonprofit like mine? My organization exists solely to help people living alone, stay safe, and currently even has no commercial goals. It seems likely that they are targeting a wide range of Western organizations with similar attacks. So first of all, this attack right here is most likely not coming from Moscow. If it was, they one, would have no reason to target you, and two, you would not know it's coming from Moscow. This is more likely than not some kind of bot crawling, and the way the users are signing up are from some kind of VPN. So it could be from Russia somewhere. More likely than not, though, it's some kind of VPN system. A good hacker who's performing an attack like this is going to be a lot better with cleaning up their tracks and making sure you don't know where they're coming from. Most likely, this website was not the 
the target of the attack. The targets were probably the users that were signing up on that list. This data was probably collected somewhere, and then this is part of some kind of bigger social engineering phishing scam. This is a list bombing tactic that people do, and there's a thousand different ways that this can be used by hackers to be able to maybe exploit data, manipulate users, overwhelm them with emails, and then do something else that's maybe beyond what you're seeing here. Now, there's no way of me knowing what actually happened in this particular attack, but what I want to do here is try to explain what could be happening in a scenario like this, and I want to do this in an oversimplified way. So in this case, we have a bunch of users that signed up to a seemingly random website from a country far, far away, right? And what can a hacker do with this information? The attack I want to demonstrate here is one where a user tries to poison a person's DNS cache in an attempt to get some information out of this person. So whether that's bank account information, maybe a social media login information, whatever we want to get that information for, we manipulate a user to get that out of them and then we can continue to do whatever we want as the hacker. So let's imagine that the hacker that's performing this attack already has a list of users and this hacker already knows that all these users bank with mybank.com. So they all have an account there and this is going to be the website in this example. So these are users that the hacker already has some basic information about. So in phase one of this attack, the attacker will get the user to open up some kind of link and potentially download some malware. So if this is done successfully, the attacker will poison or spoof the user's DNS cache and basically change the IP address of mybank.com. For context, if you don't know this, how this works is when you go to a website, let's say we go to mybank.com, this actually sends you to some kind of IP address pointing to where this website actually sits. So we're not actually going to mybank.com, we're going to this IP address somewhere. So this IP sends you there and that's how we get to a specific website. So in this case, mybank.com is actually sitting at 1916811. Now, when an attacker poisons your DNS cache, what they're doing here is they're changing that IP address. So when you think you're going to mybank.com, you're actually going to the IP address that the hacker sent, and this could be a lookalike of your website. So you think you're safe, you're there entering credentials, but really the hacker can now do whatever they want with anything you add into that site. So when you first log in, you might try to log in and then you get some kind of error and you think that's interesting, so you try it again, maybe it just says your password is incorrect, you Go ahead and type it in again, and then you actually get reset to your actual bank website. So the hacker quickly gets your information, sends you off, you're logged in, you don't see anything suspicious, you think you're safe now. So from this point, the hacker can do whatever they want with that information, whether they continue to get more information on you, they try to keep digging through these rabbit holes, or they sell off your information, that's completely up to them, they've already gotten what they needed. So what's the point of all this? Why would a hacker sign users up to a seemingly random website? Well, in this case, the hacker has probably signed the user up to more than one website. Let's say in this case, this hacker signs users up to over 20 websites. So these accounts are just sitting there. There's been nothing done with them yet. But when the hacker does decide to finally perform their attack, what they can do here is they can set up a script and this script will automatically trigger the password reset to 20 plus emails. And they can do this over a certain period of time. So let's say in a single day, you get a bunch of emails from websites you don't recognize and they're all telling you that you're trying to reset your password. So you've been overwhelmed. Now you're alert and you feel like your account might be compromised. Now the hacker finally, after all of this, sends you an email seemingly from your bank. Now you open this up and you are already aware that you might be hacked. Something's going on. So you're already suspicious and you see your bank send you an email. So now you're on high alert. This is your hard earned money. So you look at the link and you're kind of suspicious of the email that sent it. So you want to outsmart the hacker and you say, aha, I'm not going to click on that link. I'm going to go to my bank directly and see if there's been any money taken from my account. But by this point, your DNS has already been poisoned. So even if you don't click on the link that they send you, you just did what the hacker wanted you to do when they wanted you to do it. So as web developers, this is always stuff that we're going to have to worry about. There's no such thing as 100% security. All we can really do is just mitigate these tasks and try to keep our users' information safe. So what I would recommend here is definitely 
Make sure that your users that are signing up to your website are verified. Never send emails to unverified users. That means that even if it's a little bit inconvenient to force a user to send an email and then click on it to confirm that that's actually their email, those extra security steps are worth it. If you want to use something like OAuth 2, that's going to be something that makes it maybe more convenient. Definitely adds a layer of security and Definitely add CAPTCHA tests to stop bots from crawling your website. That's something that's going to really reduce that amount of spam that's really coming to your website. So that's it for you all today. I'll see you all in another video.